Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm really happy and glad to see all of you here. Well, we, well, yeah, just as glad to see each of you all in this place. So, as with this joyful mind, also at the same time, we glorify and worship our God in this place. So, as we did, as we have done every uh, Sunday. We start our worship service with a special prayer for Ukraine. So, just pray for those who suffer by war and violence in all the world uh, in silence, and then we start our worship service with the prayer. Lord, O oh the great and almighty, protect our beloved Ukraine, bless her with freedom and the light of your holy rays. With learning and knowledge enlighten us, your children small, in love pure and everlasting, let us, O oh Lord, grow. We pray, O oh Lord Almighty, protect our beloved Ukraine, grant our people and country all your kindness and grace. Bless us with freedom, bless us with wisdom, guide us into a kind word. Bless us, O oh Lord, with good fortune forever and evermore. Amen. Amen. We sing the song from the face we sing 2091. <clears throat> So today is Palm Passion Sunday. 
the special Palm Sunday evening service featuring a video for promise by our youth guru, the title, The Gospel According to Them, The Story of Jesus. And lots of singing will be held at 7 p.m. today. So, well, as celebrating the Palm Passion Sunday, come to the church at 7 p.m. and also enjoy the singing, the praising, and the youth playing. It's really good. And from today, the Holy Week starts. So there will be a Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. on Thursday, April 14. We designate a time uh, because uh, we don't want, I don't want to make you confused to time. But today and Thursday, so all those are 7 p.m., remember, and then come to the Monday Thursday. We will have a walk, prayer service on the day. And there will be a single Easter service at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday. Remember the time of this, so <laughs> don't come to 10.45. <laughs> if you come to 10.45, it's almost done to the Easter service. So please come at 10 a.m. We will have a single and union service, so you will make, you will make or meet the people who attend to 9 a.m. service. And we are going to start the Bible study, Eyes to See the Word of God. The sign-up sheet is placed in the uh, Welcome Center. Then the first session uh, will start on Friday, April, April 15 at 11 a.m. And we will have a church cleaning on Saturday, April 16 at 8 a.m. So before Easter, so as cleaning the sanctuary, the church, which is the body of the followers, the disciples of Christ, and they also the body of Christ. So as cleaning the church while well, wait and they prepare the coming and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And well we had a high activity previously and it was so great. Not only the fellowship but also the well, just singing and watching the creation of God. So we also uh, we will again open the high activities on, at 14 Park at 9 a.m. on April 23rd. So join these beautiful activities and then well enjoy the fellowship as well as the creation of God. And is there more announcements? Yes. <coughs> Okay, uh, two things for a community garden. Um, the first is uh, my chickens and ducks are producing eggs again. <laughs> <laughs> and it's related because there are six dozen eggs back there, some are ducks, some are chicken, that you are welcome to take um, and put in a donation that will go to the community garden. I'm not setting a price, it's whatever, if you want some eggs, you know, just Take some, and there's a little box in the refrigerator. Just leave uh, the money there, okay? So uh, then the other thing is we need some help. Um, I've got some seeds um, back in the fellowship hall that need to be started ahead of time for the garden. And so uh, a bunch of people <clears throat> from the early service uh, took some seeds, but there's still seeds left. There's also a potting mix, and you can take seeds, potting mix, take them home, and uh, if they grow, <laughs> uh, you know, do the best you can, bring them back, keep some for yourself if you want, uh, but uh, that way we get a, a start on um, getting some plants going for the community garden. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy, for the announcements. Let's join the call to worship. I just wanted to uh, bring this and make the announcement. Uh, the Catskill Choral Society is alive still <laughs> after COVID, and uh, we are finally celebrating our 50th anniversary um, of two years late. <laughs> and our concert is going to be the 29th and 30th of April. And I'm going to put this up on the, um, the 
uh, billboard, um, not billboard, but the um, bulletin the announcement board, board uh, back there. Um, and I, I do have tickets. Um, you can also um, get tickets, I believe, online. And um, oh, you've got the information here. I can give you more information. And you can see me about tickets. Um, it's $25 for adults and it's $20 for seniors, which is more than it has been because Unfortunately, we've been two years with no income and we've still had expenses and so we're trying to bridge the gap a little bit with raising the price of the tickets. We're doing the Mozart Requiem with a full orchestra and then the second half is songs, you know, related to spring and the reopening um, of, you know, our, our society. <laughs> and so um, I hope to some of you will be interested in, in um, participating and coming to this. Yeah, so after worship service, after the worship service, just a chat with Latin birds, everyone. <laughs> and then there will be maybe what well, good well another guest. <laughs> and is there any other announcements? Okay, let's join the call to worship. The story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem tells us that after he has celebrated the arrival, he, he went, went into the, the temple, temple and looked around at everything. As we gather here for worship today, may it be with the sense that Jesus has walked into and is looking around. May our eyes be open to see him. May our hearts be ready to be seen by Him. May our worship be worthy of His presence. And may we be transformed so that we see the world through His eyes. Amen. Let's sing the song from the United Methodist Hymn 280.
said, we would rather join the crowds than stand alone. We prefer the popular points of view to a solitary witness for justice and truth. We like safety and security while shrinking from the risk of involvement. We will sing Hosanna when everyone else is doing so, but not when the hostile Good Friday forces may hear us. We do not like to admit our lukewarm respond to you, but neither do we want to be considered fanatics. We believe Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. We know that means us, not just other folks involved in obvious evils everyone knows about. We ask you to be patient with us, to help us understand our own guilt. Then pour out your forgiveness in such a way that we are forever transformed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's letter is from Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord, Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and, know, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. 
who will then bring charges against me. Let us face each other, who was my accuser. Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me, who will condemn me. In the New Testament reading, the epistle of Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, who being, whoop, me, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself to becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. And that has been the reading of the Lord's Epistle. Thanks be to God. Our Master Hymn is called the Night of the Master of Hymn, verse 3, 25. Jesus threw their cloaks up on the colt and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the, the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. <laughs> Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees and the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, 
the stones will cry out. And this has been the reading of the Lord's New Testament word. Thanks be to God. Today, today is Palm Sunday, you know. So, what is the Palm Sunday? When Jesus came to the earth, he traveled with his disciples to various places around Galilee, teaching the kingdom of God, comforting the poor and marginalized, performing miracles, talking about repentance, and proclaiming the kingdom of heaven. Through these things, Jesus began his ministry of salvation on earth and went into Jerusalem to complete his ministry. On this day, on this day, Palm Sunday commemorates the events that the people went on the entry of Jesus by waving palm branches. Branches. At the same time, we call today Passion Sunday. Because today is the first day of Holy Week, which means the week before Easter Sunday. So, what message can we hear from the Word of God on this Palm Passion Sunday? First, today's story continues from last week's story. So, last week we just looked at the scripture from the John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And then we saw the story of Jesus with Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Mary. <clears throat> Jesus stayed at the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary and took part in the feast. When was the time? So, let's look at the scripture of John chapter 12 verse 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany when Lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Jesus was about to enter Jerusalem before the Passover. When in fact, this situation in today's Gospel has a more complicated context. Jewish people, Jewish people from all of the country were gathering in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. So last week I said that the Passover is the biggest holiday to Jewish people to <coughs> commemorate and then celebrate the exile. Exodus. Exodus from Egypt for their ancestors. So, this, it is natural, it, it was natural that the people gathered to, to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. But from the political and international perspective, it was a time of great tension, great tension. At the time, Israel was ruled by the Roman Empire, and the empire appointed a king and governors to rule over the areas. At the time, the governor Pilate and the king Herod, the Tetrarch, were ruling these regions. The most important thing for them to watch out for is to prevent an uprising in their jurisdiction. The gathering of the Jewish people for the Passover was bound to create tension for them. They were concerned because they, don't, they didn't know what these Jewish people do in the Passover. They just gathered a lot of people, a lot of Jewish people gathered in Jerusalem. But this, well, means that Governor Pilate and then King Herod they did not know what the Passover is. They just saw that the lot of people crowd gathered in Jerusalem. They didn't know what would happen in this group. 
In the sense, Jesus was a key person who could ignite the rebellion. At first, no one cared because Jesus was a man who was born in the countryside. No one cared. In a small country town, a man began to proclaim the kingdom of God to the people. But there were many people who proclaimed the speak of the kingdom of God. So, at first, no one cared. But, as he began to perform many miracles and proclaim an authoritative message different from the existing religious leaders, many people began to follow him. People recognized that he was a person who has power and authority of his speaking. So, just imagine, a person with a large crowd is, was entering Jerusalem for the Passover. If you were the governor and Pi governor Pilate or the king Herod, if we, if you see, if you saw the person with a large crowd entered Jerusalem, how scary it is! This is why there was a big, a great tension in this situation. This event in this situation was causing tension by itself. If so, what about the religious leaders? Means that Pharisees and priests. They also did not like the appearance of Jesus. They had benefits from their relationship with the Roman Empire. However, at some point, a person who threatened their authority appears. They would have been nervous because if Jesus intended to disrupt the socio-political system, the power structure of the time, and if his intention was successful, the benefit they received could also be lost. So, they were also nervous of appearance of Jesus, the entry of Jesus to Jerusalem. What about the people? The Jewish people have been under the control of other nations for a long time since they experienced complete destruction from Babylon. After the return from captivity, they regained their country for a short time. They finally regained their country, but it did not last long. They were very dissatisfied with their situation. It was difficult for them to tolerate their plight of being swayed by strangers. So, they were waiting for the Messiah mentioned by the prophets of the past. Who is the Messiah? Messiah is the person who saved them from some oppression, chains of sin. At the time, a man who called himself the Son of God appeared. They expected Jesus to save them, set them free. And in time for his entry into Jerusalem, they followed him and welcomed him. They expected Jesus to take him back to Jerusalem from the hands of law and empire. And then they expected Jesus to set them free. Is this situation pictured in your head right now? There are many characters. Governors, kings, religious leaders, disciples, Israelite, and then they had their own thought in this situation. On the other hand, the entry of Jesus was somewhat awkward. People expected Jesus' entry as king and hero. You know, 
Well, hero. Well, of course, in our time, we just know we just know the heroes as a fiction. But there are many movies and comics uh, about the heroes. Well, recently the young generation just saw the many heroes like well, Iron Man or Hulk, Thor. Mm -hmm. But also, yeah, I know the Superman. <laughs> of course, I know all they are the fiction. But at the time, the Israelite expected the hero like them to Jesus. The people imagined Jesus riding a mighty horse, mighty horse, and entering Jerusalem with majesty. Now they thought that a man named Jesus would enter Jerusalem, occupy it, and set them free. However, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, not a mighty horse, just a donkey. It seemed too shabby for a hero to appear. But it's not weird because it, it was natural. Because they had different thought. All those characters has different. All those groups has had different thought. They were facing the same time, same place, same events. They were in the same situation, but they had different thought from Jesus. Jesus did not enter Jerusalem to disrupt the present power structure. He did not come it come in to snatch the benefits of religious leaders. Nor did he come to overthrow the Roman Empire and become a Jewish hero. Jesus was not concerned about it. Jesus simply entered the Jerusalem to complete his work, his ministry of salvation by sacrificing himself as a pure sacrifice. Just as he entered on a pure donkey which had never ridden a human being, he himself came to his death as a pure sacrifice like this donkey. This donkey is a pure sacrifice which had never ridden any person. Like this, Jesus came to Jerusalem as a pure sacrifice. This only one thing that Jesus was concerned. Power structure or some benefits the freedom from the Roman Empire? Well, those are very important things, but that's not Jesus' concern. The only thing that Jesus was concerned is complete the ministry of salvation, the work of salvation. For that, Jesus came to Jerusalem toward his death, sacrifice. A lot of time has passed, and the world has been worshipping Jesus in commemoration of his entry into Jerusalem. We are also here for worshipping today to commemorate the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. But we should always ask this question to ourselves. What kind of thought do we have in the same time, place, and situation. Even though we say that we follow Jesus, aren't we, aren't we thinking differently from Jesus? Do we have the same thought with Jesus? Depending on our answers to these questions, we can be governors like Pilate and King Herod. If we have answered no, we can be the governor or king who persecuted Jesus and hanged Jesus on the cross. 
We can be religious leaders who just were concerned about their benefits, not about the will, the God's will. Also, we can become people who only seek what we want. So, who are we? Governors? Kings? Religious leaders? Israelites? We have to find our answer to this question. Who are we? I pray that this question will constantly ring in our spirits on Palm Passion Sunday as well as during the Holy Week. And then to bring your answer to Easter as celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's pray through the prayer with me. This is a vision of the way it can be, the way it should be. Shouts of welcome, a joyful procession, a community celebrating together. The, the same, same vision is offered to us today. We can welcome Christ into our lives. We can celebrate His transforming power. How swiftly things changed back then. How swiftly we, too, can be distracted. May, May we hold fast to this vision of goodness, peace from the practice of justice, equality from the practice of respect. As this week unfolds, we, we will let ourselves, ourselves be overtaken by God's love. We will pour it back out into the world. Let us now pray for those with health issues. Jerry Gage, Ward Green, Marion Mossman, Walt Renwick, friend of Sue Halbert, Stephanie Bomar, Jennifer O'Connor's sister, Jill, or, I'm sorry, Linda Jubril, friend of Stephanie Bomar. Karen Sitterly, co-worker of Emily Madison Welsh. Deb Kaiser, friend of Pat Windsor and sister of Sandy Strong. Dottie Adair, former member. Howard Matthijs, brother-in-law of Sue Halbert and uncle of Terry Madison. Jim and Jeanette Pal Palara, friends of Laura Eggleston. Corey Perrault, friend of Ron Johnson. Richard Himes, brother of Judy Knapp. Paul Dubriel, uncle of Al Dubriel. Troy Lotz, grandchild of a friend of Pat Windsor. Levi Keller, child of Kathy Chase's neighbor. Donna Hotailing, friend of Colleen Webb. For members unable to join us in person, Ruth Martin, Glenda and Bob Moore. For our pastor and his wife to establish a strong ministry in our community, Pastor Bach and Jim. For the victims of the war in Ukraine, please join now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's sing the song from the face we see 21 54.
Uh, may the grace of God go with us. May God's face shine upon us. May we carry God's peace into the world, offering the holiness and healing we have received. May our lives be our hosannas. Amen. Amen.